Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for March 29th. We are still in Unit 1 for the spring quarter, which is entitled, God Requires Justice. God Requires Justice. We're in lesson number 5 from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly and from the Standard Commentary. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm chap, uh, Psalm number 50, verses 1 to 15. Our background scripture, Malachi chapters 2 and 3. And our printed and lesson passage is taken from Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 to 9, and chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. From the faith pathway adult quarterly our lesson title is justice for all justice for all but, but let me back up and give our unit title our unit one title again is god requires justice and we are in a series of lessons involving what are commonly known as minor prophets who are speaking about uh, god's judgment uh, or his impending judgment uh, on Israel in this particular lesson uh, has to do with its religious leaders. The lesson aims uh, from the quarterly or number one, understand the significance of justice for spiritual leadership. Number two, affirm the value of covenanted reverence of God for leadership. And then number three, practice just spiritual leadership. Those of you who are in positions of spiritual leadership, as well as all of us, we are a royal priesthood and we are all leaders uh, in our own respects. From the standard commentary, our lesson title is Need for just leaders, need for just leaders. The quarterly lesson has three major divisions after the introduction. The first is a stern warning, and that's covered between Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 and 4. The second is a lesson in contrast, uh, and that's covered between chapter 2, verses 5 and 9. And then the third is judgment and restoration. That's chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. From the standard commentary, uh, our aims, additional aims, are number one, describe the conduct of the Judean priesthood of the late 5th century B.C. That is the time uh, it's believed that Malach Malachi prophesied. We'll say more about that in a few minutes. Number two, explain why God held the priesthood to a high standard. And number three, create a plan to improve one aspect of his or her own priestly ministry. And uh, we can read uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 as well as verse 9 and understand that we are actually priests. We represent God before man and man before God in our, in our intercession. Uh, the standard outline has two major divisions. Number one is falling I'm sorry, failing the call. That's uh, Malachi, covered between Malachi chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. And the second is renewing the call. And that's covered uh, between uh, Malachi 3, verses 5 and 6. So we're going to, hopefully you have read the background scripture and the lesson text. Uh, we're going to say a few words about uh, the background for context. Now, it is not known um, uh, exactly, or there's, there's not much known, if you will, about Malachi's uh, origin, his family, uh, his job, if he had one other than uh, as a prophet, 
and since you know King is mentioned in his uh, his book, uh, we cannot date uh, the exact time that he prophesied. But there are uh, uh, a number of things uh, in uh, the book of Malachi that suggest he prophesied around the time of Nehemiah, uh, about a hundred years after the first. Uh, uh, the first uh, uh, the first Israelites returned to Judah from a Babylonian captivity. At that time, the uh, the temple had been uh, rebuilt. Uh, as you know, Nehemiah uh, came back and led the reconstruction of the walls. Uh, sacrifices had been restored. However, uh, they were not being done in the manner that God had prescribed. In fact, the priests were... Uh, essentially going through the motions and they were very apathetic and and really did not regard um, uh, or reverence God and uh, did not uh, and they were going through uh, the motions of priesthood as if it were something that was a burden something that was a dread and a pain the name Malachi actually means God's messenger, uh, and some uh, believe that it may have been a pen name, and that was not unprecedented for some prophets to use pen names. Um, and uh, it's believed again that he prophesied around the uh, around 425, 430 BC, again about a hundred years after the return of the first. Uh, uh, Israelites that had been exiled. Well, sorry about that. I usually remember to turn that down. Okay, and uh, uh, there were uh, similarities between uh, issues that Nehemiah uh, had to deal with, such as um, intermarriages between um, uh, some of those who had returned to uh, to Judah and and others. Uh, non-Jewish uh, uh, people uh, there, and and again, there was there was general apathy among the spiritual leadership. Uh, they were failing to teach the people God's law. In fact, they were uh, they were exercising perverted judgments, and they were uh, actually taking bribes, and they were uh, acting as. Uh, uh, soothsayers, if you will, uh, using gifts that perhaps God had given them, uh, prophecies or, 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 or prophetic gifts uh, in, improperly. So, and, and, and the first part of chapter two uh, basically describes some of the things that they uh, have been doing. So with that, uh, as a little background, we're going to read, let's read the first um, nine verses. In fact, yeah, let's read the first nine verses and then we'll we'll have some discussion. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because ye do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. Verse 4, And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did not and did turn rather many away from iniquity. Verse seven. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. 
but ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. That was verse 9. Our key verse, by the way, is Malachi, Malachi 2, verse, chapter 2 and verse 2. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessing. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay them to heart. And we're going to go back and forth between the King James Version. I just read that passage from the King James Version. King James Version and the New International Version uh, for more clarity uh, as required. One other thing I want to mention before we uh, have some verse-by-verse -verse discussion is that Malachi had a kind of an unusual um, a writing style. Uh, he would ask a question uh, and then answer it, or rather he would make a statement, uh, and then he would ask a question growing out of the statement, and then uh, he would answer these questions or a question, and then uh, uh, say, uh, give a response from the Lord in the process. And he repeated that. He goes, he uses that style throughout the entire book. Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at Verse 1, and now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. And from the NIV, it says, and now, you priests, this warning is for you. So he is uh, being very clear as to who he is addressing. Uh, he is addressing the priest. Uh, God is speaking through him, addressing the priest. And so what is going to follow is for the priests. Now back in chapter 1, verse 6, he mentions that that was his first mention of the priests, uh, that they were despising the Lord's name. That's, that's chapter 1, verse 6. And they were abusing their, their sacred office by offering defective uh, and unacceptable sacrifices. We see that in chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Uh, and... Uh, Moses uh, had made it very clear in, in Leviticus how they were to uh, make animal sacrifices and how the Lord required the best, the unblemished animals. Uh, and they were taking the best for themselves and bringing blemished animals, uh, which was showing blatant disrespect for the Lord. And also in, in chapter 1, verse 13, we see the priests they don't look at their um their calling as as a privilege but they they look at it as as, as work uh, as, that that uh, brings about some weariness um and they are weary of uh, performing uh what again should be a privilege again in, in representing God to the people and the people before God verse 2 if ye will not hear and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessing. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Now, what does he mean by lay it to heart? If you will not hear, and hearing involves more than just uh, hearing with the ear, but hearkening, that is responding to what is said properly. Uh, and he uh, says, lay it to heart. And that means to take it seriously. Take it seriously. From the NIV, it reads, if you do not listen and if you do not uh, resolve to honor my name, okay, resolve or take what he is saying seriously then he is saying he is and he, and he addresses himself as the lord of hosts 
Lord spelled in all caps, uh, really meaning Jehovah, the self-existent one, existing one rather, and hosts are, uh, speaks of uh, his might, speaks of his, his awesome power. He's uh, the, the Lord of Sabaoth or Sabaoth, however you want to pronounce that. And he speaks of sending uh, a curse upon them. Uh, and he said he will curse your blessing. Now, this cursing of the blessing can mean a couple of things. Um, first, uh, the priests were actually instructed as to how to bless, how to pronounce a blessing on Israel, on the people of Israel, the children of Israel. Uh, we see that in Numbers uh, 6 verses 22 to 27. We're going to just look at some of those verses. So beginning at uh, number 6, verse 22, it reads, And Moses spake un I'm sorry, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. So the Lord gave the spiritual leaders, the priests, uh, the, uh, the duty uh, and the authority and the power to bless the people as he instructed them there. And, and I want to just say that uh, the priests, while all Levites, all priests, rather, were Levites. Not all Levites were priests. And he's going to use Levites uh, kind of synonymously with priests in, in, in part of our lesson text today. But not all Levites were priests, but all priests were commanded to be Levites, beginning with the first high priest, and that was Aaron, and then his sons after him. The other uh, possible meaning of this curse uh, cursing of the blessings uh, is uh, the Lord. The Lord was causing the crops to fail, uh, and of course, while the Levites uh, <clears throat> really had no farming land of their own, uh, they were to receive a tithe of from the other tribes, a tenth of what they produced. And of course, uh, if things got bad for them, that that meant that things would get leaner for the Levites, and certainly for the priests. And so uh, this this blessing uh, or cursing the blessing may have, may have also uh, been a material, his cursing of a material blessing. So again, I mean, the Lord has already begun to, to curse these blessings uh, because of the, the hardness of their hearts that God already realizes now, obviously, they have an opportunity to repent, and God gives them that, even in this passage. But he knows um, what their attitude is and has been. Let's take a look at verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. Those are harsh words here. Let's look at it from the NIV, same verse. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants, your seed being your descendants, your children and children's children. I will smear on your face the dung from your festival sacrifices, from the animals that you are sacrificing. They were to remove the dung and, and the innards and dispose of that outside the camp, burn it outside the camp. And he's saying, I'm going to spread this dung on your faces and you will be carried off with it. And, and, and those are harsh terms. I mean, but, but, but God is really trying to, uh, to illustrate. And obviously he's speaking figuratively how disgusted he is with uh, their dishonoring of him. And so he's saying, you're, you're acting like you're not, you, you're not worth any more than the dung that's being discarded before the sacrifice is offered uh, outside the camp. So, um, obviously, to to spread dung on one's face is is 
is a tremendous dishonor and 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 God is trying to uh to illustrate to them and 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 graphically he's speaking uh metaphorically but graph in graphic terms to show them how uh he feels about their dishonoring of him okay uh, he's not speaking literally here but he's he's really trying to give a vivid description of how repulsed he is by their conduct. Verse 4, And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. And again, uh, Levi uh, is a tribe. He is not speaking about the progenitor, Levi, the son of Jacob, uh, who... Um, we know <clears throat> while was the patriarch of that tribe, he had his own issues. Uh, we know he uh, was one of those that uh, actually went and, and killed those who had, uh, had raped his sister Dinah. Uh, but God had made a covenant with uh, all of Jacob's sons, uh, and they became uh, patriarchs of the 12 tribes that were descendant. Uh, from Jacob. So he, he is talking about his lineage. He's talking about the descendants, if you will, of Levi, not the person himself. And again, let's keep in mind that not all priests, not all Levites, I should say, <laughs> Levites were priests, but all priests were Levites. And so him using Levites, and there were quite a number of priests, not just the high priest, quite a number of priests beside the high priest, and they were all Levites. So he's using this term to really speak of the Levitical priesthood and the Levites that were priests. So he says again, and ye shall know that I have sent this commandment. Let's look at that from the NIV. It says, and you will know that I have sent you this warning, that, uh, that commandment uh, from the NIV, I'm sorry, from the KJV is translated warning in the NIV, this warning so that my covenant with Levi may continue, saith the Almighty God. Well, what was that covenant with Levi? Uh, it was really uh, concerning <clears throat> the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood. And we won't take time to go there, but when you have a, a few minutes, uh, take a look at Numbers chapter 3, verses 5 to 13. And he actually uh, gives uh, instructions to uh, to Aaron and his sons, and he establishes the Levitical priesthood. Well, you know, I, let's let's take a minute. Let's take a few minutes and read uh, those instructions that God gave to Moses regarding the uh, the Levites. So let's look at Numbers chapter five, uh, and very quickly we're going to read uh, verses five. Uh, we may not go all the way to 13. Let's start in, in verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and present them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister unto him, and they shall keep his charge and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle. And we know the tabernacle was uh, preceded the temple and it was the holy place and the holy of holies where God met uh, figuratively with his people over the Ark of the Covenant in the mercy seat. Verse 8, And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation and the charge of the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons, they are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on the priest's office, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine, 
For on the day that I smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, I hallowed. He said, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn of Israel, both man and beast. Mine they shall be. Uh, I am the Lord. So the Levites had a very special role. Uh, they were gods. Uh, they were gods to perform perform all the spiritual service connected with the, the worship, the tabernacle, and the priests. More specifically, uh, God is going to be uh, talking about what their duties should be, what their duties are that they are neglecting. Let's go on to verse 5. Uh, my covenant was with him of life and peace, him being Levi, uh, and, and maybe more specifically, even Aaron, who uh, was the progenitor of the Levitic priesthood or the first high priest. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me. And that is Aaron, speaking of Aaron here, and and was afraid before my name. Aaron reverenced uh, the Lord. Uh, and he feared his name, and he walked circumspectly before him. Uh, in other words, he kept, uh, 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 he, he lived a life that was uh, honoring to God. Those of you who know your Bible know that he stumbled at the beginning when uh, Moses was up in the Mount Sinai uh, and making a, a golden calf for the people uh, when they uh, practiced the debauchery while waiting on Moses. But but at this point, uh, Aaron has been transformed and Aaron has uh, been made uh, high priest. And again, he lived uh, a life that was holy and honoring to God uh, as uh, from that point on. And that's what he's saying here. OK, he said um, he feared me. Uh, he was afraid before my name or he reverenced his name. Let's take a look at verse six, six, a. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. Now, he's talking about uh, Aaron, the first high priest, uh, and, and, and in so doing, he's, given, he's giving uh, three important responsibilities for the priest. Uh, and they are, uh, number one, uh, first, uh, they are to teach the law of truth faithfully. We can see that in Deuteronomy uh, 33, uh, chapter 33, verse 10. The high priests were to teach the law of Moses. That was one of their duties to the people. The people were to be uh, informed of the law so that they could keep the law, so they could be doers of the law. And no iniquity was to be found in the priest's speech, or uh, he was not, that there was no sinfulness to be found in whatever he said. Uh, uh, he was to be a very high character, moral character. And uh, uh, we see uh, that, of course, in the New Testament era also in James chapter 3 and verse 2. Part B of 6 says, he walked with me in peace and equity. This is the second uh, responsibility. Okay, the priest was to walk daily before the Lord. And when we say walk, we mean live uh, a consistent life of faith uh, before the Lord. Uh, and he said, in peace and equity, uh, of course he is, and they go hand in hand, he was to uh, be at peace with God and certainly to enjoy the Lord's peace by having a close relationship and fellowship with him and faith in him. And then, of course, equity. He was to be uh, just. He was to be uh, straight. Uh, this word translated uh, from the Hebrew equity really uh, means straight as opposed to crooked. Uh, we can see examples of that in Isaiah 40, verse 4. In Isaiah 42, verse 16, straight versus crooked. Um, and, and we hear throughout the Bible, we read uh, where God and, and characterizing a person that uh, 
that honored him and that lived honoring lives before me turned not to the left or the right. In other words, he went straight in the way that God wanted him to go. So part C of 6 verse 6 is, and did turn many from iniquity. So the third responsibility of the priest, uh, the faithful priest, uh, is to be dedicated to helping others uh, to uh, leave lives of iniquity and to draw close to God. Uh, he was to, by example, word and example, to, uh, by a righteous lifestyle, and certainly by the words of God. He was a messenger of God. He was to help to transform lives. And that is certainly the role of not only uh, uh, preachers by vocation, uh, ministers by vocation, but all believers in Christ Jesus. As I said, we can go to First Peter chapter 2, verses 5 and verse 9 and see where we are priests. We are called a royal priesthood. And of course, priests represent God before man. We are to share God's word with unredeemed man. And also, we're to intercede for them and all uh, who, who have need of prayer before our Heavenly Father. Verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Again, this Lord of hosts speaks of his of his power, speaks of his, his might his might as a warrior. Uh, but he is saying that the the priest is to be knowledgeable of God's word and is, and is to speak that. Uh, he is to be one that uh, the, those who are seeking to know God and his word uh, can come to. They should seek the law at his mouth. They should come to him uh, to get the word of the Lord. Okay, uh, as we go... Uh, on Sundays to hear a word from the Lord, from our minister, from our pastors. Uh, they were to be uh, messengers of God and actually sharing the word of God with God's covenant people. And, and they were to be knowledgeable, uh, of course, about the Lord. He should keep knowledge, that verse said. So they were to be knowledgeable about uh, God's instructions, the Mosaic law is what we're talking about at this point. And as others were to look to the the priests for knowledge of God's law, of course, they were to look to God for knowledge, for his word, for knowledge of him. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 11, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read verse 10 and 11 here because verse 10 speaks to how um, the priests were to walk, uh, what their lifestyles were to be like. And it reads, And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between clean and unclean, or unclean and clean, it says. Verse 11, And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statues which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. So they were to teach the uh, Mosaic law. He goes on and talks about, and Moses spake unto Aaron uh, and unto Eleazar and to Ithamar, his sons uh, that were left. Okay, we know two of them died because they offered strange incense. But uh, they they were, he's speaking to them and charging them with this responsibility to teach the Mosaic law. Let's take a look at verse 8. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. So, uh, and, and let me read that from the NIV. I think it's pretty clear in the uh, in the King James Version, but just for crystal clarity, such 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 as we can get, can obtain. Let's read it from the NIV as well. And it says, "But ye, you have turned from the way 
and by your teachings have caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant with Levi, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, um, so what's he saying here? He's saying, uh, and again, this is God speaking through Malachi, you have turned from the way. The way is his way, the right way. Uh, and also, you have caused people to stumble by what? By teaching them falsely, by not teaching them God's word, but by teaching whatever foolishness uh, uh, has, is in your heart. Uh, and unfortunately, there are many doing that today. And not just talking about health and wealth uh, preachers, and we know there are too many of those, uh, and they uh, teach uh, about a God who basically is a, is a giant genie that has to respond to your, uh, your request. Uh, and, and, and of course, their God is their belly. The Lord tells us about them uh, in, in his word. Uh, uh, you have to pay, of course. And then as a quid pro quo, if you give so much, then God is obligated now to bless you. Well, <clears throat> the Bible doesn't really teach that. Even though Malachi says that he will pour us out a blessing that, did not be, that will not be room enough to receive if we tithe. But it's not a quid pro quo. And that's a... Uh, uh, Malachi tap, chapter 3 and verse 10, which is not in our lesson text today. But what is he saying? He's saying you are corrupting them by your false teaching. There are those who are uh, basically um, uh, teaching all kinds of things today that under the guise of uh, teaching the word of God uh, that uh, or, or couldn't be further from that. I mean, there's some that teach that uh, you can lose your salvation, uh, and I know there, there are many out there that believe that uh, that uh, salvation uh, is evidenced by speaking in tongues. Well, the Bible doesn't teach that either. Uh, speaking in tongues, and Paul made this very clear in the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth chapters of First Corinthians, has nothing to do with your salvation. He said he. Uh, he he spoke more tongues than all of them, but he'd rather be able to speak ten words in a known language than ten thousand in an unknown a known language. So there are um, there are people that well intentioned they may be that are not teaching uh, the orthodox, the true word of God, and certainly not with the correct interpretation. And and sometimes when they take they, they take scriptures out of context and make a pretext for whatever they want it to mean. Let's go on to verse... Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. And that's familiar to some of you. It reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest, to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So they, the people were being starved of the knowledge of God, of the truth of God, of the true word of God because of these priests. Uh, and of course, they go further than that. I mean, he's actually, they're actually uh, perverting uh, uh, what they would otherwise be speaking truthfully. Verse 9, Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. From the NIV it reads, So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people, because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of the law. So what exactly what he means by causing them to be despised? Uh, not really sure, but uh, obviously it has something to do with uh, them being defamed, them being found out uh, by, by the people uh, uh, that they are... Uh, they're hypocrites and they're frauds. 
uh, and, 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 and when he says, he speaks of them being partial, it means that, uh, that they may be taking bribes, that they may be uh, uh, doing things that are uh, saying what people want to hear. Uh, people with itchy, itching ears uh, want to hear. Of course, God, God warns about that and, and, and warned about that way back in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 16, 19 says, Thou shalt not rest judgment or twist judgment or pervert judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons. You shall not give uh, favorable uh, uh, opinions for somebody uh, as opposed to others because he's um, wealthy or, or, or uh, because he has some influence. Neither take a gift or a bribe for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. So the the priest may be taking gifts and saying what someone wants to hear, you know, like a like a fortune teller, if you will, or blessing someone uh, or, or pronouncing a blessing on maybe the most uh, corrupt a corrupt person you can imagine uh, who is unrepentant in their sin. Uh, you know, this brings to mind the uh, indulgences that were sold uh, at the time of the Reformation. That the Catholic Church was selling indulgences, uh, allowing people to sin if they donated so much to the church. So much more could be said about that that first passage. But we're gonna we've got to move on to our second passage, uh, which is uh, chapter three, verses uh, five and six. Uh, from the standard, that division is titled Renewing the Call, Renewing the Call, and from the, from the adult quarterly, that division is entitled Judgment and Restoration, verses 5 and 6 of chapter 3. So uh, uh, before we get into those verses, I mean, the, uh, the Lord does not merely state a problem and stop there. The commentator from the standard says he goes on to state the solution, which begins in Malachi chapter three, verse one. And that wasn't that's not in our text from today. His messenger will prepare the way before him. That's John the Baptist. Uh, is the one who will fulfill Malachi's prophecy. Uh, and that's spoken of in Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 10. Malachi uh, goes on to speak about the second messenger's coming, his actions, and the result. Second messenger, again, being John the Baptist, and he is a, he is a messenger for uh, uh, the Lord Jesus. He speaks of the refining, purifying, and purging uh, mentioned, uh, and they all fit the work that Jesus will do in raising up his church. Uh, and uh, uh, he will be, he will faithfully serve him. This, this messenger will faithfully serve him being the Lord Jesus. Now, we want to be clear that the Lord holds all of us accountable. He held all of the, uh, the Israelites and the and the Judeans uh, accountable for their sins, but he held the Levites and more specifically the priests to a higher standard of accountability. They they had greater accountability because they were to be teachers. They were to live exemplary lives before the people and to show the people God as we are today. So let's look at uh, verse five, chapter three again, verse five, part A. And it says, and I will come near to you to judgment and I will be swift, a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers. Let's look at that from the NIV and it reads, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless and deprive the foreigners among you. I'm, I'm reading the entire verse. 
uh, of justice, but do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. So <clears throat> God is 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 uh, saying that he is going to put them on trial again and, and he is going to execute swift justice. And he's talking about all those who are sinning uh, in various ways, sorcerers. And of course, these uh, priests could be, uh, again, uh, practicing divination. We don't know. Uh, but he's speaking probably more generally about all those who are sinning, not just them in this in this context, against adulterers, the whoremongers, and false swearers. He goes on in Part B again uh, from the uh, King James, and against those who oppress the hireling. They they had a practice of withholding wages. They would have people uh, work, and then they would hold their wages, knowing that people needed their wages. They needed to be paid every day so they could buy food for the day. We know God has always had a a, a soft spot for widows and orphans, and, and those who those who are the most weak in our society, in any society, and they and they were abused, and they were uh, they were actually taken advantage of by these uh, more powerful people in the society, wicked people in the society of Malachi's day. The God who says the Lord, he's the God Almighty, he's the Lord Almighty, is going to judge them and judge them swiftly. And again, those who oppress strangers, uh, God had a soft spot for strangers. Those are non-Israelites who sojourn with them uh, as well. He wanted the Israelites to be an ambassador for them, to be a light, to bring them out of darkness. And instead, they were actually uh, making, uh, causing them to go into deeper darkness. Uh, verse 6a, for I am the Lord, I change not. He is the Lord, all caps again. Jehovah, the self-existent one, he is immutable. He changes not. And because his character changes not, uh, we read part B, says, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And that's all the children of Israel, not just the Levites, but all the wicked children of Israel. Because God made a covenant with Abraham, that, and that covenant was fulfilled through and passed on the, the covenant he made with him, passed on to Isaac, his son, and then on to Jacob, his son, and of course, the 12 sons of Jacob, because he made that covenant and his character does not change, is why they are not consumed, why he has not consumed them, even though uh, they are wicked and even though uh, his, he, uh, his wrath is stirred. He is, even though his wrath is stirred, uh, he is merciful because of his promise. And again, his unchanging character means he will keep all of his promises. Uh, much more could be said here. I think we've taken probably enough time. I hope we have uh, understood uh, what Malachi, what the Lord God uh, spoke to Malachi uh, through uh, about uh, the spiritual leaders of his day. And we can make application of that in our day. We are our spiritual leaders or to be by word and example, uh, those who show uh, believers and unbelievers God. I mean, they're to show uh, his character, they're to show his judgment, they're to show uh, his word and teach his word faithfully. And that does not only include those who are spiritual leaders by profession or vocation, but all of us who call on the name of the Lord. So we pray that, again, you have... Uh, Benefit from, benefited from this lesson and that this time has been fruitful. And so we pray that God will bless you until we meet again. Amen.